For those of you who are currently using Lovable or Cursor, I want to let you guys know about the Insiders version of Visual Studio Code. I've been using code for a very long time and I've experimented with Lovable. It does an amazing job. Cursor does an amazing job, but I want to see if I can enable the agent mode within Visual Studio Code. And the answer to that was yes. And it's this Insiders Edition, which like it says here, it says get the latest release. Sometimes they release multiple versions a day and you get this little update notification uh, within Insiders or Code Insiders. And, and really it's <laughs> the pace at which they are releasing features is quite amazing. And, and to see Microsoft doing it at this pace is really, really cool. So. I prefer to be in Visual Studio Code. I built a lot of my apps within that, as well as websites, all within Visual Studio Code. It's all obviously well integrated with GitHub and so on and so forth. So a lot of different reasons, but um, I want to just go over today a few of the features that are available, especially the ability to add in your own language models into Visual Studio Code Insiders. All right. so. This is the site you go to, um, just Google Visual Studio Code Insiders, and there's both Windows, Mac, Linux, et cetera. Lots of different versions for you, whichever uh, OS you're currently using. All right, so that's where you can start with Visual Studio Code. And then let's jump into the actual agent mode. So the regular Visual Studio Code, which is the fully released version, does not have the agent mode as of yet, I believe. I don't think that's available. Um, so I think in the regular version, you'll just get the ask and the edit, but in the insiders edition, you will get this agent mode down here, okay? So as you can see, um, just a little side note, if you're used to using cursor, you know that within cursor, you could add documentation links, custom instructions, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of things you can customize, but um, if you aren't aware, cursor is actually a fork of Visual Studio Code and they built cursor using that, um, that code base. So here we are, the source of what cursor is currently using, which is Visual Studio Code and here in Insider's Edition. And as you can see here, I have a file called copilot-instructions.md. And this sits in a GitHub folder. And within the settings in Visual Studio Code, what you can do is say, hey, when you are developing, follow these instructions. So basically what you can do in Cursor with their custom instructions, which has a visual interface to um, adding those custom instructions, the difference here is that in Microsoft Visual Studio Code Insider is you're going to just use a markdown file to add those custom instructions. And so there's a lot of really uh, good instruction sets out there. You can just Google that or look on GitHub. There are some really, really cool cursor rules um, that you guys can um, basically replicate into a custom instructions file for Visual Studio Code Insiders. I'll add that link to that, the repo with the cursor rules that you guys can take. And depending on what you're building, whether it's Python, Next.js, or other, find the right set of rules to be able to import that into Microsoft Visual Studio Code Insiders. All right, so a little side note around how to set up Insiders to work with the types of apps you're using. So uh, over the last week, we can have, there have been two really, really major updates to Insiders. First, first one, which I just saw, I think yesterday or the day before is you already have the ability to add in MCP servers here in, in Insiders, okay? So uh, as well as the ability to install extensions. So that's a really cool update that they made. But the other update that they made was the ability in which this video is about is the ability to add in your own language model. So previously there were only three language models available. One GPT 4.0, Claude 3.5 and Claude 3.7. So these three, the two previews and this third one was what was previously available. But you can see here that I have a lot 
of other language models available because I was able to add these to my insider's edition. So you do that by managing models and then opening that menu up, adding your API key. And so, you know, you can see here, I was already able to add Gemini 2.5 Pro Experimental, which just released on March 25th. And I believe on March 26th, insiders had already the ability to add this in because I put my Gemini key in and added this as a optional model to work with. So, so pretty cool that you can actually have multiple models here because, you know, just with, as with cursor, as you guys know, for your $20 a month, you're going to run out of those uh, fast responses and you're going to sort of be defaulted back to the, the slow responses. Right. So, but here the difference is that, um, you know, with Copilot, if you have the, the $10 a month Copilot account, you get all these three models, GPT-40 and 3.5, 3.7 previews. Those are all included as part of your $10 a month account, right? <laughs> oh, excuse me. And so because those are you know included for $10 a month, you can pretty much use all of these within that and and <clears throat> you know maybe last month we were hitting pretty uh we we're hitting the rate limits pretty often but now those rate limits have definitely gone up i i find myself not hitting them very often even if i'm using the 3.7 model um, and when i do hit those rate limits i'll default back to 3.5 and then if i hit the rate limit there I'll default back to 4.0. And if I hit the rate limit there, then I'll go and, you know, pick one of my other models that I'm actually paying for. So, and, and when you use these, it's relatively cheap still to, uh, to continue on with your development cycle. So want to start with this, um, again, go, you know, download the insider edition, start experimenting with it. Go set up your custom instructions file so, or copilot instructions file so that it's tailored to the type of stack, tech stack, or framework you're working with. Right now, this is set up for Next.js. Uh, but if I were to do Python, I would add in a different set of instructions as well as a different set of um, um, documentation links and so on. So, um, so for example, you know, I, I've been using Resend for the email. And so I included the recent documentation so that it's, as it's developing, it can refer back to that and make sure that it's uh, using the right sort of, you know, code structure to make sure it can work within my Next.js app. All right. Hopefully you guys go and try this out, see if it's a good option to replace possibly your cursor development cycle I'm currently experimenting with using Lovable for the front end and then bringing that component in or those components in into my um, into this environment so that I can use leverage the really amazing capabilities for front end development and bring that over to this environment where I've sort of fine tuned it really well to build out the Next.js apps or the back end pieces. So. I'll come back with another video around that. So we'll see you guys next time. Thanks and uh, welcome to this new channel ID. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you.